one about raising chickens. Yeah. 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 But it's also it's all about killing chickens that you know personally. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It tricked you into thinking it was all positive. It's never all positive because I'm crazy. <laughs> I eat cigarettes for breakfast and coffee for lunch. For dinner, I lay in the dirt and wait for the end times to come. I wish I could tell you the truth, but when I do, it comes out sounding stupid. But meet me at four in the morning and see for yourself. There's some rise and sunset. That's all I really gotta know. All the rest is a prison that I built for myself. And my worst nights have still burned down the city just for a piece of nice rest. But here in your arms, my darling, I think I can wait. Or I hope I can.
go do one more. My voice, is, my voice is cooperating with me less and less, and the longer the evening goes on. It's very, it's very good to be here. Thank you all for being here. Thanks everyone who helped put on the show for, for having us and the space for having us. And thanks to my old friend Brooke Pridemore for going on tour with me again. This is, uh, I just made, oh, so I have like CDs and shirts and stuff, everything is by donation, so whether you have money or not, you know, you can have, you know, you can have things if you want them. Um, this is a, a song off of uh, an album that I, that I made very recently, and it's about, um, I don't know, it's about, it's about optimism and pessimism and how they can coexist in the same moment. You know, like, like the world is coming to an end, but also the world is terrible, and maybe the next one will be better, you know, like things like this. <laughs>
they all hit nice. But I understand. <coughs> God, I miss him. I really, really wish he would make music again. Anyway. <coughs> Perfectly legal. <coughs> I'm dying. I'm dying for your entertainment. I'm dying for your entertainment. Oh. All right. Uh, Astral. That amazing drunk music is Pat the Bunny. That's that's Pat the Bunny. That was him live um, at the Hot Metal F a Bridge Faith Community in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in March of 2015. Uh those tobacco coughs. Exactly, Caboose. Exactly. Caboose. <clears throat> Question of the day. Question of the day. Did you go hang out with your gym bros? I mean, that is true, Sergeant. That is true. Did you go hang out with your uh, gym bros? Morning, Caleb. I Axel. Oh, Caboose. Oh, that's a shame. Keep trying. Keep trying. It's worth it. Like you saw, you saw a cat in my like monthly prices and shit. Like you're like, is this fair, homie? <laughs> it's a steal. Fucking cozy up to these guys. Cozy up to these guys. It's worth it. Oh, yeah. This is what it is. Tell them next time you see them, just tell them like I came by after work, but I think I was too late. I'm sorry, guys. I really wanted to be there. Seriously. That's dude. That alone. Dude, trust me. They're gym bros. They're gym bros. Uh, I'm expecting they're intentionally waiting for 420. Dude, Excel, if the federal government waited for 420 to announce the decriminalization of fucking weed, that's a little too meme -y for my taste. That's a little too much. That's a little too self-aware. If the federal government actually waited until 420 to announce that shit, and I, I, that would bother me. That would bother me. I'm sorry. Why is the government work it wait until the funny date? Do your fucking job and get the thing done, right? Like that's that's a little, yeah, that would that would piss me off. Actually, <laughs> there'd be a moment of amusement, and then be like, wait a second, fuck you. Aww, are you ever gonna proudly cringe? Apparently, caught a ban evasion on it too. Um. <clears throat> Are you ever going to move out of your echo chamber and debate someone with an opposing viewpoint? Like yourself? Would you like to come on the air? What's your opposing viewpoint? Yeah, sure. Come on. Let's, let's talk. Let's have a conversation, my man. Destiny? Why? Why destiny? You're a destiny, Stan? Oh, I didn't see that coming. You're a destiny stand. That's interesting. That your go-to was destiny. That tell that tells me a decent amount about you, actually. That's fascinating, my man. Destiny. Anyone. Infrared. Second choice was was has. Second choice was has. First choice destiny. Second choice has. Interesting. Fascinating. So you need someone else to do your dirty work for you? Is that what I'm hearing? You clearly have a disagreement with me, but you won't actually engage. You're just attempting to pawn me off on somebody else. You're here, do the job. What's, what's the task? What's the conversation you actually wanna have? It's in there somewhere. You will just gish glop me with a million facts. Okay. All right. So you're attempting to characterize what I'll do ahead of time. So you can sort of dodge. What's the conversation, man? Okay. You've seen my work. What's the conversation, man? I don't know. I just want to see you debate someone. 
tired of you debating noobs. Okay. But you watch, don't you? That's fascinating. You're hate watching. You know that, right? Dude, I'm, I, your opinion doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. So, you're just hate watching. You're just sitting there molding, watching anyway. That's kind of funny, man. Dude, just grab a beer, grab a smoke, and just try and talk about these topics and think about these topics at a slower level. That's literally what we're doing tonight. Dude, I'd be, if you wanted to have the conversation, tonight is the night. Do Tuesdays and Thursdays are your nights. I'm not going to do a thousand facts. Dude, I'm fucking ripped. On perfectly legal tobacco. Right? Like, if you want to have a real conversation, this is one of those nights. Homie, let's talk. What's your real issue? What's the thing that matters in your life? Not my opinion. Let's have the conversation. Seriously. What is the thing that drives you? What's your number one? Show me a little humanness. It's not a fucking setup, man. What's your purpose? This isn't some gotcha question. I'm literally trying to have a human moment with you. Drop the ego, drop the facade, drop the internet drama bullshit, drop the personalities. This is just a dude who lives in Las Vegas having a conversation with some anonymous voice on the internet. What's your deal? Why? What are you about, man? Harley or Ducati. Beast gets it. Oh. Nine ninety. What's up, my man? Got in a fight with a very rude YouTube bot today. <laughs> oh, the utter gall he had made me so mad. Nine ninety. What happened? Oh, I'm Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm perfectly sober. I do not touch anything on those shows. I'm usually post workout on those shows. Uh, tonight I am post workout and post bong rap. Yeah, this is just a real moment, man. Like this happens from time to time on this, uh, like on my channel. Dude, the way this all started was seriously me coping with a sincere set of pain-based chronic illnesses in combination with not being able to do the old activism I used to be able to do. So I screamed into the void and some weirdos started listening. Not, not billions, not millions, not tens of thousands, just thousands across a couple of platforms, right? It gets weird, but it doesn't have to be this hyper competitive space. That's kind of critical within anarchism is that you kind of let go of some of that hyper competitive, just cultural drive that's drilled into us. And it gets, it gets in there deep sometimes and you get competitive with friends and family. It's a weird impulse. Dude, I'm, I'm not your enemy, right? You want a better life? I want a better life. Let's try and talk and figure out how to make that work. Rather than do this constantly. Nonsense. Get on the fucking air, my man. Get on the fucking air, you bitch. I'm fucking lit, man. (laughs) Oh, how was your stream? Dude, that was intense. Oh, it's 
It's gonna be one of those nights. Yeah, and I invite anybody who wants to talk on my app. I'm not that guy. I'm not here for that. I've talked to some of them. Some on the air. Some of the smaller ones, but not the Vosh level. Vosh has been in here a couple few times. It's, dude, I'm not that guy. You're asking me to do something I just don't do. I'm not about that. Yeah, sometimes the conversations get a little combative. It happens. But I'm not a performance monkey. That's just what it is. I'm not about that. So you're not going to get that, man. So either ease up off my dick, continue to hate watch, or move on. That's really where we are with that, huh? So... Nonsense, get on my fucking air. <laughs> uh, wait, what, what is going on? Nonsense, what have you brought in here? Okay, I'm just going to time that out. I don't know what that was. Squiddy! Peaceful part before this happened. I am witness. Hey, Squiddy, how are you? It, the booth was a goddamn old Hollywood guy. Oh my god, we get some interesting ones. I am <clears throat> firmly under the influence of, uh, of some perfectly legal tobacco product, Squid. And I am post-workout. So I've got a confluence of events happening on me right now. And I took to the air for the fucking After Dark show. We're, we're, we're keeping it a little, a little functional, way too, way too real. So what's up, my man? Everybody hydrate. That is a good point. Turkish blend. Yes. Turkish blend. Oh, so what did you do on your stream nonsense? And why are you still not on my air, you bitch? Okay, that's weird. Yes, Kai did. Kai did. Uh, you're you're hydrating with whiskey for breakfast. Fuck it, says Caleb. Holy shit, man. God, you fuckers operate on a whole other level over there. Ah, uh, it's been a fucking weird night. Uh, um, yeah, it's gonna get weirder. It's about to get weirder. Especially, at least for me. Oh, interesting. That is an interesting list, Cupcake. That is an interesting list. Oh, lovely. Made some stuff, watched some edgelord art, watched two recent videos of the five feet <laughs> lady. What's going on with her? I haven't been following that one. Did you have anything funny? At what age did I realize I was gay? Dude, <clears throat> there was no grand realization. This is this is like the bad news. I'm I'm the wa I'm a walking case. There was no grand realization. Um, I always knew I was gay. Like, I didn't have a word for it. I just I was attracted to the boys. I just was. I in kindergarten I was chasing boys around the play playground with, I assure you, the same intent that the heterosexual children would. Yeah, it, it it's just inbuilt. 
it's just the confusion usually occurs with the uh, culture. If you're in the wrong environment, I was brought up in Vermont. It super okay with a lot of shit. My parent, my mom didn't give a shit. You know, it's like that. So it wasn't a big deal for me. But like if you're caught up in some of that stuff that inflicts some shame or some outsiderness to that, yeah, it fucks people up. It makes it difficult to realize who they are. They come to terms with it later and so that's when their realization occurs. But really if left your own devices you just sort of lived your life that way from a very young age. And that's what occurred for me. It's just sort of who I am. It's who I've always been. And it, it you know, I kind of just grew up side heterosexuals. Right? Oh, some people are that way. Some people are this way. It's the way it works. I had a very comprehensive sexual education very young age scientifically driven I you know yeah no I my mother a lifelong nurse she's not a fucking dummy right I got taught that shit very young it <sighs> makes life a lot easier I gotta tell you it makes life a lot easier it really does Right? It's it's just... <sighs> Dude, why you gotta fuck people up like that? It's mean. It's just mean. It's just mean. <laughs> like, that's... Like, I, I fuck any made-up reasons. Give me any fucking reason outside of some biblical bullshit. Right? Come talk to me. I'll have that conversation. But... Most of it's driven by some weird ideological bullshit. And you're like, I'm sorry. That doesn't get to enter the conversation. We're talking about somebody's somebodyness. Go fuck yourself. That's not... We don't negoti negotiate on that. Are you kidding me? That's just... Pff, that's the line. Go fuck yourself. Like, that's... It, 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 I'm a person... What? There was... I was watching some documentary. Some African tribe. It's about the, their language. <clears throat> and the name for their, their... What they use for themselves and sort of their language, it just translates out as... We people. It's like that. That was, that was, that was their entire concept. They're like, yeah, it all should just extend out from, it's us, right? Like, just inclusive set. Doesn't matter, it's, it's us. Fuck, man, stop fighting. Stop fighting. It's stupid. It's stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid. We can have these conversations like adults. I just don't think our species is ready for it. I really don't. <laughs> Dude, we're not. We can get there. There's a route there. But, I mean, that's, at this point, near utopian thinking, isn't it? We got a lot of problems on our plate. Well, then let's have a conversation of some alternatives, right? Like that's, can we meet midway? I see the value in the concept of like the religious communal gathering. I get that. Dude, that's important. I, I don't dismiss all of what that is doing. It's just toxic as fuck. Right? Like that, if you take that concept 
and open it up a lot and stop being so picky and choosy and tribalistic. That becomes a really cool, powerful tool for humanity. Community like that is important to our species. I don't want to get rid of that. I want to transform that. I, I, I want that to be purified. Yeah, I want a Christ-like take on that. Way too much infighting there. That religion gets wielded against in-group after in-group, though, doesn't it? I want that, though. That shit's really important to us as a species. We need that. But it needs to be something different. We're fucking it up. Concept. Everywhere is a gay bar, says so some sense. Uh, I base I base my morality on percolation. Hold on, let me scroll back. Uh, let's see. Nine ninety, intelligent conversations during pandemic venting chaos should wait another year. Let's make sure we and our neighbors are fed and safe. Nothing wrong with just knocking on your neighbor's door to find out. Yeah, dude, this is kind of the truth that anarchism shares with everybody at this point. If you're a pragmatic sort. If you have a bit of realism anywhere in your your philosophy set, shit's fucked up, right? Shit's fucked up. This the system is screwing us one way or the other. Just how how and who is usually the argument, but at the end of the day, we're getting fucked, right? We're gonna agree that we're all getting fucked. We'll have some differences on who's to blame. But we know we're getting fucked, and we know there's a system that's fucking us, right? And we know the sort of stuff that gets human species through these times is that sort of village communal mentality. Watch out for your neighbors. Watch out for your friends and family. Build out that, that tool power structure. Build out that mutual aid, right? And if you can include more people in that process and you can grow and expand that, that just gets better and better and better. But yeah, you can have an, ego uh, an egoistic take on that. That's fucking Sterner. <laughs> don't, don't consume too much Sterner. But it's Sterner, right? Like, that's, that's Sterner. Like, yeah, look, look, you can look out, look out after yourself. Like, that's what you're, you should be doing here. But you recognize that you're a social species as well and arrange your mutual aid network as you see fit but stop relying on the big systems that's that's something you can't do we all agree on that like one way or the other and here's here's what the here's what the left really really doesn't doesn't understand or they understand, sorry, they understand, but they really don't want to come to terms with is that the other teams are way ahead of us on this one. They are. And that's what freaks us out a lot of the time. <laughs> Dude, look at those quiverful Christians. Look at those psychopaths. Do those quiverful Christians, do that's a winning strategy. They're going to outbreed. They've, dude, they usually, those quiverful Christians usually have decent, like, collective incomes. Dude, they, they dude, it works. It's a winning strategy. It, that one could, that can play. And there's, that's that sort of shit that the left doesn't want to come to terms with. Like, deep down, it bothers us, I think. And you have that conversation. It's like, you know, the Mormons are way ahead of us on this one. 
Hey, Level! I like your YouTube a lot. I'm through eight chapters of Rules for Radicals as of today. Tomorrow, I think we'll be able to finish the book. Tomorrow, I think we'll be able to finish the book. So, I think there's two more chapters, but the last one is, I think we can do... We'll see. But I think we can do the final chapter tomorrow. Final chapters tomorrow. So... Yeah, we'll have more of that up. And then I'm going to switch back to Bob Black. And then I think I know what I'm going to do. And I uh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I That'll be fun. It's weird. It's weird. I also want to do uh, Prudent, but... Posties rise up. Yeah, that'll get weird. Dude, if I do, I have... Where is that shit? I keep it around. This shit is bizarre as fuck. It really is. After Post Anarchism by uh, Dwayne Roussel. This is, this is like, okay, let's do like the hardcore philosophy of this. This it, it, It's weird. It's just weird. You, you get to certain points and you're like, wow, this is abstractive thinking. Right? It, like... Nobody lives their life like this. <laughs> Nobody lives their life like this. It is, it hits a point where you just kind of, I don't know, I, was, I think a third of the way through or something like that. I was just like, okay. All right. I, I see what we're doing. <laughs> so, yeah. Definitely go make, go make a sandwich territory. Uh, we need anarchism in Korea red though the people demand it and by people I mean me I hadn't considered it Kaiser but I could start it once I start it eventually I'll work all the way through it we could start it yeah why not I think it'd be funny yeah we can we can weave it in I like sandwich. Yeah. Still here. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll I'll weave it in. We'll we'll start anarchism in Korea. That we need more attention. Yeah, we we need we need more attention on on some of the non-anglo implement implementations i've i've gotten i've gotten to ramble about the philippines or the <laughs> archipelago um a couple of times so yeah well we should jump over to korea and take a look i uh cupcake i've s a couple of times they do they do. Um, they can do that. Um, but there's also plenty of passive-aggressive emotional credit systems outside of communal structures as well. Um, yeah. There is an argument for uh, at least a potential for a concentration of it, given the continual and con uh, near-constant contact depending on the size of the communal structure and the density of the uh, population groupings. So yeah, there's a conversation there. And you can have communitarian style econ uh, economic systems in those sort of sub, uh, sub micro uh, communal structures that especially like the quiverfuls end up doing did they'll have dude there's all sorts of fucking negative negatives to especially that style the uh how would i put it uh within those tight social structure uh social uh constrictions uh what you end up is a sort of amplification of the um overall pathologies so yeah things get amplified uh in those tight-knit quarters of lack of outside contact 
Um, you can end up with some of that, dude, some of that Amish shit. Dude, why do we give them a path, a pass? W what is that a thing in our culture? Why do the Amish get a pass? Dude, they're fucked up. You know that you're fucked up, right? Like, they're fucked up. <laughs> um, dude, they, all sorts of sexual assault, all sorts of assault, all sorts of inbreeding. Their genetics are a mess. Yeah, we see them as cute or something. Dude, they're fucking mutants. They are the subject of so many genetic studies. No, I'm not kidding you. Like, that they are one of the most studied, like, genetic studies. Period. Dude, they've got so many weird genetic anomalies because of all of their inbreeding. It's ridiculous. Um, and they don't self-report with Twitter. They get a pass because they're white and Christian. Red, that's it. Yes, no, it's both of these. It's Car Karina and Red. They get a pass. They get a pass because they're white and Christian. And as a result of them getting a pass because they're white and Christian, all we're left with is the aesthetic, and we find them cute. We find them quaint. No, oh, God, that's disturbing. Um, second after certain subgroups of Jews. Yes, dude. Some of those Orthodox sub subgroups. Uh, let's see. Not, ge uh, not genetics, but they are the main importers of drugs into the U S. <laughs> oh, let's see. Mexican cartel boss uh, arrested over a Mormon massacre in which nine died. Yeah. I remember a documentary non-binary ages ago where dude they were they were interviewing um one of the major uh, opiate providers pill providers at the height of the opioid crisis right and one of the major like the major importers it was a bishop in the mormon church he was like yeah like it was you know wah, 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 you know in the shadow and they voice modulated that sort of shit but yeah it was a bishop in the church <laughs> of course of course they knew of course they knew come on they 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 that's a that's a multi-billion dollar enterprise they got going there you know that right please we had no idea <clears throat> sure sure um they make good carpentry and going to their towns is like visiting a zoo says beast. Yeah. Yeah. It's entertaining for us. It's fucked up. It's a human zoo, isn't it? Ah, oh, that's weird. That's weird. But it's true. I know I've asked this before. It was John Taylor got a legit. Always surprised that most people haven't heard of the Prussian model. It makes me feel a little conspiratorial. Dude, level. Did you actually read it? Just read it. Amish fried chicken is lit. Well, I mean, you know, they're, they're frying with lard. He's okay. Here's the level. He's associated with some undesirables on the left. He's not on our team. That's what you, you know, realize he's not on our team. So that's what you're going to encounter. Um, yeah, Karina, I like their hats. The Amish have a lot of depression. Dude, they have a lot of problems. Dude, the Amish are fucked up. Like, they've got a lot of fucking problems. Um, and so, yeah, like, mm. Um, cringe. The Japanese are in demographical collapse. Dude, they're, they're killing themselves. You know that, right? J Japan's... Dude, Japan's a case study here. This is... Dude. They're not doing good. That hyper-capitalism is killing them. It, their society is just falling apart. They're in they're in the middle of a demographical like free fall. It's insane to watch. 
<laughs> I. That's just fucked. Wild idea, Red. Leftist quiverful. Communal child rearing combined with surrogates and adoption. Red, viable idea. It's a viable idea. It really is. If... If they're rigging the system that direction, lean into it. If you're inclined to have kids and you're inclined to communal living, do so. It seems advantageous economically. It seems advantageous as far as child rearing and making it easier to raise those children. It seems that you can provide a sort of greater parental defense against the <laughs> ills of this world that are gathering, no matter how you perceive those ills to be. This stratagem, but can be applied across the spectrum politically, I think. Why can't it? Born expecting 10 acres and a white picket fence. I live in my mom's in 990. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Kaiser's doing this. Okay. Oh, God. Cupcake. Yeah. Why, why people in Japan are being paid to have babies? It's, dude, it's bad. They're up to 1.46. They're not even at replacement. They're not at replacement. That's their high. 1.4, oh Jesus. Yeah. Wait, did you, Cupcake, <laughs> are you? For sure. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Gamer Jam. Recruiters are gross. Imagine having a secret set of criteria that nobody knows but you and the outcome of your test determines someone else's life. Yeah. We call that a class traitor. That's what it is. There's an old timey term for it. It's a class traitor. You're you're down in the trenches with us too. Why are you fucking us? Oh, I need a job. Well No. <laughs> Some jobs you just don't take. <laughs> like I'm sorry. I that's highly privileged statement, but like that's some jobs you just don't take. Like, think about it sometimes. Collective action has always done the most damage to social structures, governments, whatever. That's just how it works. Get a bunch of people together, get them to agree on something, get them to put their, their fucking heels in the ground, and you grind it to a halt. It's happened before, it's happened elsewhere, it's happened here. It's, it's, it's an entirely doable process. But if you're a hyper-divided, individualistically driven, competitive society, 
gets difficult to get people on the same page for long periods of time. Especially given all of the apparatus that we live amongst. No matter what direction or manner in which that is being wielded, how you feel about what direction it is perceived to be, I think most of us can agree on that point that, yeah, we're getting fucked. There's a machine that fucks us and we'd rather like a lot of that not be fucking us. So can we find a way to like live amongst each other and with each other that sort of gives us some breathing room from that apparatus if we can figure that out? Capitalism doesn't do aftercare <laughs> for two. Capitalism doesn't know what after dude. Capitalism charges you for aftercare. That's that's just capitalism. That's a microtransaction. That's if you if you bought the the fucking season pass and you put in the XP grind, then you can get yourself some aftercare. Yeah, it's like that. Not even fucking as good. It's just fucking us in all the wrong ways. That's all. I hate season passes. Dude, I... There's a lot of stuff in gaming. That is just a manifestation of capitalism. It's just greed run amok. Dude, microtransactions and season passes and all of this DLC pay... Look, all right, if you give me big enough DLC pack, fine. I'll, I'll throw you a few bucks. No worries. We'll handle that down the line. But all this, like, just nickel and diming. Jesus fucking Christ. Just give me the goddamn game. All right, like, I don't buy AAA games. Dude, my, my one indulgence is Hitman, and I don't think that that's triple A. It's like double A. Dude, I, IOI is not fucking a triple A studio. Like, that's... Dude, yeah. Like, I don't buy any... Don't buy that shit. It's so miserable. All of that shit. I, I can't... It's ridiculous. Uh, day one DLC... Pharaohs were much bigger in aftercare. Uh, pharaohs were much bigger in aftercare than modern billionaires. I mean, I hear good things about the Egyptian mead. <laughs> the, the, their beer apparently was super healthful. It was it was full of nutrients. So, yeah. uh, wait, where am I? I mean, tag somewhere. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's fucking us in all the wrong ways. I don't think I can show that on stream. Um, <laughs> Non-binary, I see you. I see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not stream safe. Uh, it lacked hops, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of hoppity, 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 hoppy beer. Uh, cupcake, uh, liquid bread, yeah. Hey there, duck. Oh. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. No, I think it's, I think it's accurate. I think it's accurate. Oh, is this the crime think? Okay. Um, books still aren't ready, but... Here are the PDFs for the books that you have backed. Okay, cool. Okay. So can we dial back on it? Can we have that conversation? Dude, I'm a pragmatist. A pragmatist. Uh, I've 
I openly talk about how anarchism in the scale that I would love to see, that's not even a possibility in my lifetime. I am open to sitting down and having the conversation. I just want an anarchist at the table to ha at, for the conversation. I think we have salient points of, and critiques of a lot of stuff. And I just want to see at the table. That's all. Let me into the conversation. That's all. Let me talk to you. Can we talk about dialing the capitalism back at least? Yeah, but that's, that's consumer driven. The conversations happen at the consumer level. This is, this is literally a conversation that has to happen amongst the people. Most of our talking points and topics that we are actually concerned about, we need to disempower a lot of these corporate entities and that's gonna need collective general actions. And so we need to start like, if we really want to rein some of this shit in, no matter how you think, if it's Biden and the fucking Democrats wielding it to, if we want to bring this thing down a bit, right? And like, hey, 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 let's slow down there. We don't need this much power wielded against the people and that sort of thing. Like, if we want to back this off, let's back it off full stop, like all the way, right? Like, don't, let's not wield it against each other. Let's just draw down. Why do a lot of these entities need to exist? We're giving them our money, right? We are knowing we're conscious actors in the system. We need some level of coordinated action. So let's coordinate. Where can we meet each other with, at? Oh, I would love to. Okay, here. Okay, first off, streamer level. Try and use as much resources. Like I, I am weaning these fuckers off off the platform for the like the subs and stuff like that. You can make more money off Twitch while on Twitch. Front load the advertisements. So um, it's just accept that, like guys, you know, just don't pay any attention to the advertisements. And so use the platform. Okay, so that, that sort of dissolves that. Now, the primary dry, uh, income for Amazon is actually their AWS platform. They run the internet. That's, that's where they make their money. But here's the crazy shit. Government platforms are hosted on AWS too. Like CIA. The CIA cloud is run on AWS. It's fucking insane. We need to first decouple that. Which means... The stuff that like some groups really love to wield against other groups, some of these tools in government, we're going to have to dismantle some of these things together. And that's going to take collective action because they're they're wedged in there. That sort of Citizens United ruling, dude, that's bad for all of us. Whether you think Disney is forcing an LGBTQ agenda or whether you think Disney is the reason in a, of like all of animation and that's where all of creativity goes to die because of their fucking hyper capitalist fucking manipulation of the system. No matter how you hate that company, that company needs reined in, right? There's, there's these sort of agreements that there is entities in corporate, in the corporate sphere that we could legalistically rein in. But we allow divisive dummy topics like, are you a human being or not? Who gives a shit? You're like, fucking, this is ridiculous. Well, you're trans or gay or black or, or a Trump supporter. We're going to have to forgive and let live on some of this shit if we're going to get some growth out of everybody, right? The fact of the matter is, is that we need to start actually talking to each other as Americans again. Because we've let the likes of Rush Limbaugh make hundreds of millions of dollars off of us. And the likes of Bill Maher make hundreds of millions of dollars off us. Right? Like, that's, that's, that shit's real. 
we know it's there and we could actually change our behavior if we really wanted to but we've become so apathetic bread and circuses man it works but lot, there's um, some infrastructure problems there's some things that uh, they've been falling through the cracks for a while and those circuses and that bread they're pretty fucking expensive these days so cupcake I reached for what I would think like that side with an Overton window Bill Maher that's that was that was just my gut go to like that. What's the counterpoint, right? Rush Limbaugh to Bill Maher. I think that, that I'm like I think the perceptions, like the bi-directional perceptions of how would that would be perceived. I suppose. Yeah. Um, your boyfriend just got a job at Amazon. Maybe we can get him to infiltrate, dude. That shit's super fucking. Dude, they. They, you better believe after that creature. And congratulations now. Dude, I wanted to actually say that. Now that I've seen that like 50 other Amazon warehouses have reached out to, um, was it Christian Smalls, to to co start coordinating. Okay, now I'm happy. I, 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 I have this really pessimistic gut reaction to early lap victories that like any progressive group does because... I'm a beat dog at this point. This fucking dude. After you've been around for a few decades and you see how many times you get the fucking boot heel by the, the state, right? The the apparatus. You know, it's like, holy shit, man. We're all getting our teeth kicked in. And so like, it's, you know, it's occasionally, you know, it's twitchy. I'm twitch, you know. But yeah, now that I see that people are actually fucking doing it because they see it can be done. Yeah, now I'm happy. That, dude, unionize the fuck out of Amazon. Unionize every fucking department they have. F f not, not just warehouses. Unionize every fucking square foot of all those fuckers. Take the syndicalist route. Like, dude, set up the trade unions again. That's the first, that's the first stop. It's the first stop. So, actually go there. So many, so many train stations to change at and trains to take after that to keep going. But it can be done. It can be done. Dude, humans went to the moon. Humans went to the moon. That's, that's still, like, that will always be the thing for me. Our species, that is, that is the opposite. That's not what our species is, like, biologically seemingly intended to do but it's we fucking we, we went from flight just just man-powered flight to the moon in what 60 years it's ridiculous we're doing some crazy shit we can do it moon kubrick did the moon thing yes yeah i i just we need to decide to actually do it Oh, are you actually here? Oh my God. I mean, I'm a little high for this, but homie, why'd you send calibration settings for a Siemens MRI scanner as your evidence? What's up, Japanese? Oh, I'm, this is the After Dark show. I'm fucking <clears throat> intoxicated, shall we say. It's, dude, it's a vibing show. We're just, we're just talking. So we'll bounce around. Oh, we went through all your evidence. And mine. Yeah. I taught people what B-Vals and BVEX were about. And I walked them through exactly what that file set that you indicated was. I showed them the PDF. 
how it was an explanation for the setup for the MRI machines themselves. Aperture settings, f-stops, that sort of thing. I showed them the calibration files themselves. We walked through what they meant to a Siemens scanner, a uh, 3T Siemens scanner for the Human Connect Dome project, yes. Um, they gave me, you know, they gave me access. So, yeah. It was literally nothing. And then I walked through, what, a dozen or more of my sources? Yeah. Yeah, it's a two-part segment. Well, two and a half. That was some wacky shit, man. subfolders. <laughs> Proudly cringe. Private or personal? Personal? Go for it. That's a usage issue. If you utilize it on any regular basis for personal use, you t technically own it, right? Now, private. Does the owner of the manufacturing facility use it on a regular basis? Or do other people use it in a legal construct, social, economic construct, in which he is seen to have owned it, even though he doesn't use it. I argue that the likes of Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and George Soros and any one of that tier of wealth be decoupled from the apparatus that creates that wealth. Yes. I don't think boards of directors, I don't think holding companies like Vanguard, I think those are weapons. I perceive them to be different. They're predatory. We need some of these apparatuses. I can completely agree that, I mean, at base level, you'd need transitionary apparatus no matter what, what you're arguing for. And if somebody's arguing for a complete 180 on a fucking dime, they're nuts. So, you know, you'd need transitory methodologies anyway. But... I th we already know how to do this without this level of predation. We just need to... clean ourselves up off the ground because they've been kicking us into the fucking concrete for so many goddamn generations at this point that we're kind of like beat dogs. But truth of the matter is, is we can look to history. We all know what it needs doing to some degree or another. Look out for each other and... See if we can't do something about this. <laughs> Dr. Professor. Dr. Professor. 
this just I'm serious like this this like your yeah dude I logged into Ida jumped over to the human connect down project project went to download the the study data just like you did because you didn't understand a, a fucking uh, a medical software web interface like that because they're fucking obfuscated and they're completely fucking absurd and nothing's labeled well you didn't even pull any actual study data you pulled the calibration set and the explanation about the the aperture uh uh, the, the sort of like the, the MRI machines uh, specs like that wasn't anything you sent us calibration data man that's what you showed us I, I, I have the files still we pulled them up go look at the 2.5 episode man homie I don't know what the fuck you thought that was but that was not evidence to support a thesis of early life, comprehensive sexual education is a net negative to the individual and society. In no way, shape, or form did any part of that, or the Human Connectome Project itself, by the way, have anything to do with that. There is no correlative data, data within that study set to attach to anything involving sexual education, gender identity, sexual development. There's nothing in that study about that whatsoever. You're literally full of shit, my man. Like, holy fuck, man. <laughs> Nobody's going to take you seriously. Dude. Your credibility is 100% shot. It's not even a study. <laughs> this is an example of a file from the first zip file that you download off of those three. Uh, here, actually. Ooh, actually. Let me pull this one, too. Um, is it this one that I got rid of your email address? Yes. Okay. So, this is the evidence that you provided us. These are, the fi uh, these are examples of the files attached to them. I have the zip files right here, if necessary, to show them. Here is a, an example of the... Uh, this would be the B-Vals and the Eddy adjustment file. This is, this is literally a calibration setting, and you can see the deviation that occurs there. And then here's another one, except these are just the B-Vals, the diff grew. And here is the PDF. That is the uh, third item, structural and diffusion processing methods, that describe the data, uh, data gathering methodology for the Human Connectome Project, none of which that is in fact you didn't even have the common courtesy to try and fudge your way through this with some obscure neurological information using the actual scan data from the goddamn study you are so far off the mark and the human connectome project has zero zero data associated in their database with any correlative up you can't tie a single one of those. The only thing attached to those brain scans is age and sex. Oh, and any deviations thereof, because there's some autism studies in there as well. Because they mark autism. That's it, man. That's all that's in that data set. Dude, not a, fu not a fucking psychologist but I am a lifelong IT guy and using stuff like that and making sense of data sets. Welcome to my fucking world. Right? Like, dude, that was nothing to do with anything related to sexual education. You're a fucking joke, man. Uh, 
oh, that's the wrong thing I sent, right? Oh, I meant to send something else, even though I reiterated multiple times that that's the evidence. Just look at it. Ooh. Wildcat got back to me. Uh, yeah, I don't like silver. I hate silver. All right. So anyway, man, of course he pivoted. Of course he pivoted. Dude, homie, please. That was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. I got to flex, though. Dude, you did give me the opportunity to flex. So, but, like, man. That was the weakest fucking attempt at faking data I've seen in a while. That was bad, man. Anyway. How's the Ukraine be situation being felt in the U.S.? Eh. Uh, I guess it's different where I'm at. They're fighting uh, 20, 30 miles from the border. Eh, something that actually matters. But curious if it's in the topic in the States. Yeah, Japanese, we talk about it. It's in our news cycle for sure. It's it's definitely at the forefront of our news cycle regularly. Um, I think the population has decided where they stand. I think everybody's just gotten the information that they need at this point to like dig their heels in and the side, the, the lines have been drawn. The ones who are on what, who feel one way or another about this topic. I think at this point feel one way or another at this topic. So yeah, I think America is decided Japanese on this topic, but, and it is at the forefront of our news cycle. Um, it's not the full news cycle by any means, but we do, we have a fair amount of stories about it. Yes. Hey, you're welcome, Japanese. Uh, what's going on there? Oh, oh God, non-binary, here's something to support his claim. Fucking XC, <laughs> XCQ, man, XCQ, non-binary. Dude, I learned a long time ago. I don't even need, all I need to see is that URL. You think I don't know the fucking URL to a Rickroll at this point? All I see is the XCQ. I look over, I'm like, oh, here's something to support his claim. But I see the XCQ, I'm like, oh, it's a Rickroll. Yeah, fuck, I know that URL. <laughs> Oh. oh. If you've gotten rolled twice in your lifespan, whether it's usually when they transfer mediums, right? You can't rickroll me with a URL, right? But if there's some other shit, right? Like it's a fucking button on a on an app or a QR code, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, like if it's if it's obfuscated, you can get me with a rickroll depending on what it is. But it's always when it transfers mediums. That's that's cuz once I if there's a standard set for it, yeah, I'll just eventually learn it and and then it's null. Yes, I did beast. That was a good Rick roll. That was a good Rick roll. Yeah, the fucking they uh, they did a drone uh, QR code in the sky and it was a Rick roll. That was a solid piece of work. I respected that. Oh, don't bother returning, man. Don't don't bother returning. That's yeah. Nobody. N yeah, nobody wants you to return, man. That's OK. It was, it was fun. It was fun. Holy shit, man. 
Good luck. God bless. Don't come back. <laughs> uh, yeah, go, go bitch it nonsense. Sorry, nonsense. Go, go bitch it nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, professor, go, go to nonsense password show. He'll love you. Have fun, nonsense. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna have a ball. You have a ball. Go go hang out with nonsense. Nonsense, you'll enjoy. Oh yeah, super personable guy. Get him on the air. He'll call in if you can get him to call in, homie. You want to hear this? Oh yeah, the character, the affectation. Oh, I, uh, I I can't even do it, dude. It's it's like some pseudo academic, pseudo intellectual fucking version of something. <laughs> it's 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 great. Yeah, yeah. Have fun. Have fun. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna have sources, not really, but he's gonna have sources. It sounds like a real hood. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it's great. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I, I you know I don't put the dude like yeah. If you want to hear it, it's on the YouTube channel. <laughs> Go to the Conversations playlist, uh, episode two, Dr. Professor SC. So, <laughs> enjoy. You can hear it for yourself. It's, um, it's an interesting experience. Uh, oh, that is weird. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see that now, Cupcake. I just looked. Um, oh, all right. What's up, Joe? What do you want to talk about? I see this description here. Is this really you? I can feel you. Dude, I got nothing but love for the back of the house, and I grew up in IT. What's your deal, man? Dude, you you worked in the demo scene. Respect. I hope you're still here, bro. I want to have that conversation. I live, in, I live in Vegas, Joe. Dude, if you don't, if you don't know food and beverage in Vegas, like if you don't know people, like you're just, I'm sorry, you're just not paying the fuck attention then. Like you don't know the right people. Yeah, dude, everybody knows somebody in food and beverage in Vegas. It, it's the backbone of this fucking town. I got nothing but love for the back of the house. Front of the house, I got some qualms with. Um, <laughs> but, but you crazy fuckers that work back a house, I. Dude, I got nothing but love for. So. You, uh, to be on a tear there, though. What you on about? What you on about, man? Talk to me. You want to come on the air and talk to me? I, I guarantee God, I believe you. Dude, you're in the fucking trenches. Food service takes it on the fucking uh, on the fucking ass all the time. 
food, sex, desperation, ah, AKA Vegas. Uh, all my best homies I drink with are the people who are usually behind the bar or in the kitchen. Yeah, dude, they're, they're the fun ones. They're the ones who are interesting people. And that usually comes along with working class, by the way. Most of the working class people are interesting. That's the truth of the matter. All right? Yes. Fucking, dude. There's a guy down the fucking road from me that just welds shit in his garage all day. That's his gig. He's got a boat. He's got a, like, he's got a top-end Audi for his wife. He's got a fucking, like, big old fucking truck. He's got a two-story house, and he's got, like, three, four kids or some shit like that, right? He just welds shit in his garage all day long. I ride by, I, you know, exercise by, and it's just, I see him. I'm like, homie. Yeah, that dude's living an interesting life. He's constantly coming and going. He's constantly fucking, you know, yeah. Dude's fascinating. He's living a good life. He's just doing his thing for himself and, you know, doing well. I got nothing but love for him. Yeah, good welders can make back, and apparently he's a very good welder. Like, yeah. I mean, labor creates all wealth. That's the truth. Right? I knew that when I was a consultant. I figured that out. You know what? I figured that out when I was a field tech. Because I had known what it was to earn money directly as a custom programmer in my early teen years. People just cut me checks and shit. Oh, it was some stuff. Um, anyway, um, and then, you know, when I ended up in like field tech work and I'd see what we're billing out, but I'm the one doing all the work. I'm doing paperwork and shit. Like, yeah, I'm not keeping the account and bo accounting books behind the scene. And I'm not doing the fucking legal. So I, I know what I'm not doing. But I'm looking at the cut I'm getting out of this number. And I'm like, you know what? The most work, I know where it's happening. So I'm getting fucked. Right? So the ideal situation is... Eliminate as many middle men, middle, per, middle persons, um, my inbuilt paternalistic language coming through. Eliminate as many middle people um, as you can in your life. Find suppliers, find producers, find makers and crafters. Find the people who are closest to you that make things, build things, and do things. If you can find somebody who, you know, yeah, a handmade piece of clothing that is made correctly lasts a while, you know? Um, you could also do. Barely wear your clothes, which is basically what I do. Um, fucking hey, L. Fuck you. <laughs> Thank you for the Bezos bucks. Thank you for the Bezos bucks. Fucking twelve months too. That means you get a uh, you get a pink A now. Oh, how are you, L? Um. Oh, Jesus, you really are, um, you're wound up tight tonight, Joe. Good, thanks. How am I doing? Um, I'm toasty. Just put it that way. I'm pretty, I'm pretty fried. Um, so, 
we're uh, keeping it on a certain level. Well, that's, that's good to hear. So what policy initiative? See, here's the thing. Dude, I'm, I'm not going to set you up for some weird shit. Dude, I'm an anarchist. Homie, I'm an anarchist, right? Look, I'm also a pragmatist and I can talk policy initiatives with you and I can at least look at them from an intersectionalist and a harm reductionist method that an anarchist would bring to the practice. But I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass and sit here and be like, yeah, if only we get the right set of, uh, of fucking politicians in there elected, things will magically change for us. Doesn't work that way. Never has worked that way. We got a problem in us. This is, this is, this is something that the people of the United States are going to have to solve. Because you're too divided. You're too aggressive. You're too competitive to get the job done that needs doing. It's dude. You constantly like we're constantly battling in our own in groups. Even it's insane. So just chill. What's the policy initiative? What, what, what is the topic? What is the thing? Because you seem supercharged on something. You want to talk about something. What's the thing you want to talk about? What's your topic du jour? United States solving its problems. We're fucked. You know, it was it Churchill that said you can count on the Americans to do the right thing after they've done everything else. You know, it's like that. We'll get there eventually. It might be too late, though. No guarantee. Uh, happy nightmares. Yeah, there is. But I mean, the truth of the matter is, is we kind of are at that point. Th them, dude, nightmares. Them telling us it's on us is bullshit. All right. That is. That's fucking bullshit. Fuck you. But let's have the conversation amongst ourselves, right? We know it's we're, we we got to do something. They're not going to step it down. Right? They're not going to back it off. So we do actually have to do something. It is actually on us. Fuck them for their bullshit propaganda trying to offload the responsibility onto us campaign nonsense. Yes, 100%. Condemn them for that action as well. Yes. But reality of the situation, right? What you going to do? We got to do something. They're not going to do it. You, you think, I, hey, Apple, could you just give away all your money and stop being such dickheads? You know, hey, guys, could you stop trying to build some weird outer space and Kapistan fucking dystopia shit that I know you're all trying to race to build? You know, hey, hey, uh, state, could you stop, like, killing your own people? Because uh, in the 20th century, that was the number one cause of death in the world, was government-inflicted death. That's a real thing. You can look that up. The number one cause of death last century was government. Democide. That's the term. We state kills people more than anything else. Dude, that's government is the number one killer of people. That's insane. That was that's democide. So we have to have the conversation. Yeah. It's bullshit that they say it's on us, but we know. We know it's fucking on us. Always has been. This is a weird ebb and flow, a pendulum. Oh, 
how abstract you want to get about get about it the way the f the flow the DAO, right it's it's got a windy path and there's some ebbing and some flowing happening right now that uh, <laughs> you might want to have those mutual aid networks set up you might want to you might want to be ready to take care of each other a bit because I don't think I don't think the apparatus is coming to save you or at least us collectively as a species maybe let's have to it conversation tuition Night demon. Sleep well. You're probably long gone now. Alright. Can I get to the beginning of this? Where is... I don't see what flipped you out in the first place. Let's see. The U.S. is absolutely flawed and somewhat broken. The fight over immigration is the stupidest thing imaginable. Reality sucks, but it's the fight over Title 42 worth democracy. Is there that much of a fight that's happening over Title 42? It was implemented, or it was, the regulation was called into play in, what, 2020? Title 42, it's, 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 it's one of those um, sections, right? It's U.S. Code subsection something something title 42 right it's the disease restriction on uh, immigration it's been used in the past for hiv it's been used in the past for a few things um but yeah they they use that regulation for covid it's not bespoke to covid though right but it has shut down what asylum seeking So, like, yeah, well, um, fucking, yeah, it would be, it would be asylum seeking, right? That it also shuts down. So, yeah, that effectively closes our borders to a huge degree that is, can be arbitrarily selected to. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why that didn't pop. Stevie, thank you for the follow. Um, or did it and I just didn't notice either way. Um, yeah. Like, okay, let's, let's do that. Oh shit. Here you are saying title 42 is a public health restriction on immigration. That's specific to COVID. No, I don't think that's correct. Uh, no, Title 42 is a giant compendium, actually. So Title 42 for COVID would have been... Section 262 of U.S. Code Title 42. Yeah, Title 42 is a giant compendium 
of regulatory. It's it's just a giant regulatory body of legalese. Here you go. It has to do with public health, social welfare, and civil rights. This is Title 42 in its entirety. All this shit is Title 42. All right? Like, that's... It's it's technically subsection 262, and even that isn't COVID-specific. It gets invoked in time of need, essentially. It, um, title six, uh, section 262 prohibits entry into the United States when the director of for disease control believes, quote, there is a serious danger to the introduction of a communicable disease to the, into the United States. Uh, essentially, depending on the health situation, the U.S. is able to prohibit entry to anyone except U.S. citizens, lawful permanent residents, and their spouses and children. So, yeah, like it's okay. We need to rescind the usage of it then. Joe, we're a room full of anarchists. How, how much further left do you think you can go? Hey, Stevie's checking in from Scotland. Well, welcome. How are things in Scotland? <laughs> what? How are you getting fucked there? <laughs> Someone mentions creative writing and all hell breaks loose in chat. Yeah, 990. That's what happens when you have a lot of fucking creatives. Joe, there's two different schools. You've only encountered m most of the on uh, the um, most of the um, sort of modern era anarchists. Yeah, take that one percent time to just do some harm reduction. Nobody takes the federal election seriously, but your mayor, like your city council. Your fucking sheriff. Do these fucking people matter? That's the dude who's going to decide whether people are boot stomping you or not. Right? That's the dude who's going to fucking... Those are the people who are going to decide, zone, you know, it's zoning. And that's the dude... Okay. Like, that shit matters. That first line voting. Dude, it, that's harm reduction 101. And if you get sit down and actually talk to some fucking, like, anarchists that have been around for a lot of days and fought a lot of fights. Yeah. Take 1% of your time, right? <sighs> Take 1%. 49%, 50% education, 49% fucking direct action, 1%. Just do some down ticket voting. It doesn't, it, dude, you're already living under capitalism. There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. There is no ethical participation in our society. That's just, it's, it's a contradiction if you have this, this degree of analysis. So... Why not just accept that and do some harm reduction on the side? So, yeah, you need to talk to, like, a lot of the modern theorists, at least. And I can point you in a couple of directions that will say, like, at least, yeah, at it, it, the very bare minimum, there's a salient argument there. You know, there's still a an ethical framework argument. There's still a moralistic argument. There's still, you know, there, there there's arguments to be had, but you will at least get recognition that like yeah that shit matters it does your fucking president is useless though <laughs> they're just gonna allow that ebb and flow to happen one way one direction or the other right they're controlled essentially they're just a figurehead of a portion of the system that gets to take primacy for a little bit it's a very weird branding thing the president <laughs> oh god Jay oh Jay at least with most anarchists you can still discuss instead of rapid uh, rabid and fanatic Marxist is Martin Gnosis I, you know that's kind of like that's that's what uh, homie doesn't understand that like 
what I'm about is it's like, I'm trying to trying to actually have just conversations with people at this point. Right. I don't want that weird debate, bro. Gee, it's too much work. I'll do it when it, it calls for like demo, democtor, Dr. Professor SC. Yeah, that dude needed handling. Fuck this guy, right? All right, we'll smack him around a bit. But for the most part, I just want to start talking to people. I mean, I'm going to fucking correct them where they need correcting, right? I don't want my friends bullshit me either. <laughs> that's not that's not who I am. I'm going to have my conversations. Like It's like, no, that's, that's not true. What? No, that's not true. <laughs> that's demonstrably untrue. And let's fix this right now because I don't want to hear you spouting nonsense. You're my friend. That's, I don't want my friends walking around saying stupid shit. So, uh, Joe, except it's not the same. That's the basis of harm reduction. The other, the other guy isn't the same. Joe, you need to talk to me. You need to, like, yeah, you're having a conversation there that, homie, focus on me. What you got? Like, but that's, you need to. For a while. Who's the theorist to find out what's the ship Theseus replacement of law enforcement? Uh, the star program is starting to show how you can draw down the uh, um, the uh, influence and presence of law enforcement in your 911 calls. Um, Minneapolis, I believe, is uh, running community run police uh, replacement programs. And they are starting to show good results as well, but they are admittedly in their infancy, but they are showing <laughs> less negative interactions. So, yeah, maybe maybe it is sort of a uh, everybody go back to your corners and cool down for a little bit situation. Um, let's give it a try. So... It's showing excellent results in uh, Denver. The STAR program is showing that you can immediately start getting rid of a whole host of reasons to call the uh, call, uh, the police in. And they're seeing positive results, and they haven't had one negative outcome. We covered this fucking last week. Or, yeah, last week. Um, they, had an, they didn't need to call for police backup a single time. And they were dealing with people in the midst of psychotic breaks and drug-induced frenzies, the whole thing. That's, that was their, that was the intent of using these non-police mental health professionals who know what they're doing. Yeah, and it works. It works. Immediately, there's a percentage of your, your police presence that has been escalating and has been harming people. Yeah. Get the police out of that. They don't, belong, they don't belong there. There's a whole bunch of stuff the police shouldn't be doing. We all know they shouldn't be doing it. You're running around hitting everything with a fucking hammer. This conversation is not just a fucking nail on a board. This is far more complicated than that. So let's start talking realistically about how this apparatus needs reining in and needs dismantling to some extent or another. Because it's out of fucking control. It, it has been since the beginning. I, I have, dude, I have 20 minutes. It's called The Origins of and Problems with Modern Policing. I have fucking done this run. Like, the truth of the matter is, is that this is just how this was set up. That, that's, police are operating as intended when they inflict upon the populace. It's what they're there for. Always has been. So, like, it, yeah.
Yeah, uh, uh, okay, Joe, but I need to get you on the air, Joe. I don't know what the fuck is going on there. Um, uh, Cahoots. Yes, thank you, Beast. Um, Cahoots never gets name checked. And yeah, Beast, I fucking, I didn't name check it the other day either. Dude, Cahoots is Oregon, right? Uh, Eugene, Oregon. 31 years ago. 31 fucking years ago, they started doing this crisis assistance, helping out on the streets. It's a community policing initiative and started in 1989 because they've been doing this shit for like ever, uh, apparently in Eugene, Oregon. And this shit just works. Like it's dude, it's economic too. There's money saved. There's money saved. You want your, you want your taxes to go down your local taxes? Start. Start doing this shit. Everybody will be happy. Everybody. I, dude, Joe, I think you're drunk, man. Dude. <laughs> uh, that's adorable. Um, yes, there's the Lincoln chat from Cassidy, fucking, Jesus, Cassidy putting in the fucking work, thank you. Um, the police are there to inflict upon those who break crimes and not to inflict upon the general population at large. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, homie, um, no. No. Um, no historically. No contemporarily, no legally, no soci sociologically. No. The, the, the police inflict upon based not on criminality. That is the number one driving factor as far as the origins of policing in this country is a twofold situation. The police in the South, slave patrols. And the union busting, what was referred to as the big stick in the north. There was the night watchman system that was worked at a time, but eventually what happened was you had the big stick. The big stick was characterized by privately controlled interests, business leaders, um, industrialists, mercantilists within the regions would kick in funds and they would buy land and they would buy various things, uniforms, they would pay the salaries. And anytime that a union got a little too uppity and they needed busting the police who who helped with crime in the city were called in to do their actual task because that's what they were there for they were a private force for the oligarchs at the time and so this actually evolves out of the metropolitan police force of london and like there's this i i've done this like i walk you through this sort of thing and it, it just it is we never reformed that we codified it slavery is still legal in this country the 13th amendment codifies slavery slavery is forbidden except where in uh in a conviction of crime when you're convicted of a crime in this country and this has been upheld twice in the Supreme Court. If you, uh, if you are convicted of a crime in this country, you are functionally the slave of the state. That has been stated explicitly in one Supreme Court ruling. He is for a time a slave of the state, I believe is the, the quote. Like, it, it's... Dude, it's always been that. Uh, I would uh, be offended if you came at me and called me a liberal too because I'm not I wouldn't really be offended either I'd just be annoyed that I have to correct you that's all uh, where was that um, I saw somebody mention Oh, Aspen said, my county in Oregon 
started sending crisis help workers to calls instead of the police. Nice. Yeah, no more of that. There's there's not an there's not need for the police in a lot of the calls that end up in the stories that we have to talk about. Where you have like some autistic kids caretaker ended up dead. Shit like that. You're like, that's just completely needless. And there's not that's a symptom of the training protocols, not it's there's no amount of we just need to add more training or change the training that is the system that that's 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 what's intended it's it's not oops <sighs> that's just racist it's just tribalistic that's just fraternalistic it is very very in group and they have militarized at this point it's ridiculous um yeah, they're a source of fear for the society as a whole. Straight up. Yeah. Um, is the, as the American concept of police, like the way you think about it, yeah, I want to abolish police. But I'm not saying it's a free-for-all. Like, that's not what I'm saying. I, there, there's, there's methods and replacement organizations that you could, you could ar easily argue that this is a semantical difference. And I argue that there's a, there's a reason we choose different words for different things. And that trying to get rid of a um, set of under, uh, perceptions underneath of a word uh, is a valid reason for shifting the word. If the, if those perceived under, uh, like subtextual reasons and uh, definitions attached to a word are too incorrect, then I think there's a reason to change it. So I would say that we wouldn't call it prisons or police, and this isn't me actually dodging the question. It's just the fact of the matter is, is that there are restorative and reparative methodologies that you can implement. Look, the individual and society both have the right to self-defense. So there needs to be a mechanism to protect the people and protect the individuals that make up the people. Because I, I'm not a collectivist that is the, the classical sense, right? I'm an anarchist. Our, our, our strength rises from those in, that individual autonomy. Then we build networks. We do we strengthen through that because we understand that's where our true strength as a species lies. It's logical. It makes sense. Um, but I think that we need to just pivot. Maybe do a bit of a, a cleaning house. Um, I would also offer you a compromise that I have been advocating for years here's here's my compromise you there is a free market solution to fixing policing in america there is one you eliminate the police union and two you implement personally held liability insurance That's how you do it, free market style. You want a conservative free market solution that will fix the problem that everybody on the left is bitching about. That's your solution. Dissolve the police union and implement personally held liability insurance. That will solve this. Once we actually have accountability for the police individually as an employment group again, and they are beholden to the same capitalist, ruthless capitalist interests that the rest of us are, 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 uh, are subject to. Because you shoot one, like, one small black kid in the back of his fucking head, your insurance premiums are going through the roof. It's that simple. So if you can't pay for your liability insurance to be a cop, you don't get to be a cop. Right. And you people like, well, there's some, you know, yeah, police captain can make two hundred and twenty five thousand. He can't cover 15 million payout. He can't cover seven point five million payout. Shit like that. Right. It's going to be insurance and his insurance rates are going to go through the roof. He's not going to be able to fucking keep up with them. 
he'll be uninsurable, and he'll be unemployable. There's your free market solution. You get to do some union busting, and you get to tr uh, transfer some uh, some business over to the private insurance industry, which is essentially a, an extension of the banking industry at this point. You got an actual thing that could like shut the lefties up for good, basically. And y'all don't even take it. That's why we point out the cruelty is the point. That's why we say the cruelty is the point. Oh, I got you. I got you, Zippy. Uh, Zippy, I heard an interesting thought on TikTok. Someone said that every black person should get life insurance. Insurance companies will sue the ever-loving shit out of the police and really put a magnifying glass on them. Dude. Yeah, I got you, Zippy. It's like, wait a second. Let me find it. Let me find it. Joe, that's absolutely impossible and not a viable market solution. Joe, every single fucking, every single group has personal liability insurance. M my mother as a nurse had per had personal, personal liability insurance. M me as a fucking IT consultant had personal liability insurance. Every dentist in the land, every electrician, everybody has personal liability insurance. What are you talking about? That's not a viable solution. There's, there's so many professions that operate, even at an individual as well as a collective. When you're, uh, when you work for certain agencies like United Healthcare, the nurses that work directly with United Healthcare, they have to get their own personal liability insurance to be qualified for employment. That's already a thing. It's not a viable market solution, dude. That's that's a segment of the insurance market. That shit just, that just is. Like that, that's, that's just the way that works. It's a perfectly viable market solution. Astral change it. They're already in bed with them. Change it. Dude, you don't have to be approved. You have to be able to... F oh, that's never good. He can't get past the welcome page. Oh, Lord. He's been... S How long has he been stuck on the welcome page? Oh, Lord. Yeah, he is drunk. For about 10 minutes? Dude, winner, winner, checking dinner. Dude, that's the longest. Oh, I almost want to experience it now. I kind of want to just give him the role manually and just walk him in if we can. I kind of want to. I'm a fucking masochist. I'm a goddamn masochist. Fucking. I kind of want to experience it. Yeah. Oh, dude, Zippy, that countdown clock's gonna be going for a while. I don't think, I think I'm gonna have to do this one manually. Joe, the instructions, the, the, you do this yourself. You're not waiting on us to authorize you. If you read the first two sentences of the welcome page, it tells you exactly what you need to do. You're stuck on the welcome page. Now I can bypass that for you, but you're not waiting on authorization on our side. You're just not reading directions. That's it. Ten minute welcome page, Viva. Ten minute welcome page. Oh. Watch this. Let there be light. Hey, Joe, look at Discord now. Help me step, bro. I closed some shit. 
The great filter is the welcome page. The great filter filter is the welcome page, dude. That welcome page, dude. I must, uh, dude. I I channeled some magical shit apparently when I put that one together. That, dude. There's there, there's some fey energy up in that bitch. It's like a infinite maze. It's labyrinthine in nature apparently for for a certain set. Yeah, dude. That 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 welcome page puts in fucking work. This is going to be a train wreck. This is going to be a train wreck. Oh. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a thing. Hang on. Jesus. Yeah, I've been meaning to implement one of those. Oh. Oh. What are these like? Right? You know, we have to hold out the possibility he's not drunk, right? What if he's sober? What if he's sober? But oh, what's he about? <laughs> uh, dude, for twos, for twos, I think you predate the welcome page. You didn't get, you, there was no welcome page for you to get stuck on for twos. You predate the welcome page. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. So the reason that you can't remember whether you got stuck on the welcome page is because you've never done the welcome page. Yeah, so. Yeah, that went up after you were on. Maybe he should have to now. For Toos, for do you want to do the welcome page? I can make it happen. You're doing it on an alt, don't mind me. There you go. Atta boy. Let's see. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> oh, shit. He's in. He's in VC. Uh, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. All right. It's going to happen. Uh, Viva. Uh, Viva. Um, all right. Hang on. There you go, Viva. You have an unwelcomed account. Now, let me go talk to Joe, because he seems like the impatient type, and I don't want to leave him thinking I'm fucking fucking with him. Don't go anywhere. What's up, Joe? I'm here. All right. Can I, can I get you to count to five for me, please, just so I can get your audio leveled? One, two, three, four, five. Nice. Thank you. You're very uh, well. So, what's up, Joe? What part of the country are you in? I'm in Vegas. Uh, I'm in. Oh, yeah, I'm very impatient. That's why I waited all this time. What part of the country are you from, Joe? I'm in North Carolina, you know, the place where we need Senate seats. Okay. Best barbecue comes from uh, lowland country, North Carolina. I just want to point that out, everyone. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would, I would, I would put it on uh, Low Country, South Carolina, with the mustard base. But I can go in sure. for a mustard base. I'm in. 
Um, fight. Sorry, I have to. It's been a while since I've lived in the South, but you know, it gets into your soul. Um, so yeah, so you need Senate seats. So who are? No, you need Senate seats, fucker. Jesus. You, you and your anarchist fucking desires need fucking Senate seats to actually enact this shit that you want to do. And I live in a place where you need those seats to enact the shit that you want. No, you don't. Right? No, you don't. Yeah, no, yeah, I do. No, I mean, you really don't need Senate seats to do any of this. No, you do. Okay, so I'm going to explain why you don't, and you're going to have to explain why you do. Okay? That's how this is going to go. I'll go first. All right? Okay. Cool. All right. So anarchism works on a person-to-person basis. It works as a grassroots hierarchical system, meaning horizontal rather than vertical. So fundamentally what we do is create dual power structures or systems that sit beside the statist infrastructure. Prime example would be something uh-huh. like Food Not Bombs that operates in, what are we up to, 100, 120 countries on a global scale, feeding millions of people using reclaimed food and that sort of thing, right? It's, the scope and scale mm-hmm. issue is addressed readily within anarchism. So it's creating dual power structures such as in the community-driven action uh, sort of uh, uh, situation in Eugene, Oregon, which has shown, what, 30 years worth of functionality, you don't actually need Senate seats for that. You don't actually need elected officials for that. Mm, disagree. I mean, yeah. Now, like, now explain it, on, why. On a lo- Look, on a local level, and and on a philosophical, like, bullshit level, yeah, you don't need, like, actual federal government seats to do, like, like silly little shit. Like no, like, right. make, like making sure people are fed and housed. Yes, silly little shit. Yes, very much so. No, 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 no. Highly reductive. That's a, that's, oh, yeah. That's I a, mean, you know. That's they, a very they, good approach. What if, what if, uh, I, I just want to. Hey, 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 hold up. Hold the fucking phone. Okay. Right? All right? It's, We're going to act like the Federal Housing Authority doesn't do fucking shit. Well, you're like, yeah, my my anarchist system does fucking everything. No, fuck off. That's bullshit. We're going to act like Medicare, Medicaid, fucking Social Security, like all these federal programs don't do a goddamn fucking thing. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, no. You, no, you hold the fuck up because you're bullshitting people. You are fucking bullshitting people. And you need to fucking understand that you are fucking bullshitting people. It is fun, Pooh. Right? Um, so I advocate no, first. No, you are, okay. you are fucking bullshitting people right now. Cool. Acting like, acting like, acting like your little like outside government shit does more than government shit, which is fucking bullshit. Hey, Joe. It is. Hey, Joe. One, take a deep breath, man. No, I... I, Two? Yes. I advocate for... You're correct. I I understand what you're saying. I am am good with a lot of the things that you are advocating for. So... But you you are also full of shit in half of the shit that you're advocating. And you have to understand that. So, Joe, how about you let me finish? I don't know, saying anything at this point. Yeah, you can yell at me some more after I'm done saying a thing or two. Okay. Oh, say say plenty more. Oh, oh good. Thank 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 you for letting me speak. Um, I actually advocate for a st- uh, style of socialist interaction with the present system of governance that's uh, created by a French socialist by the name of Frank Gores, which says that functionally you can utilize a system of governance to run what's basically a knife's edge of empowering, but at the same time with an intentional goal of dismantlement. So what I would say... No. So you want to run a system of government that's... Uh, I want to transition to a different style. Yes. You, you want to you 
run a style of government that's small enough that the Russians can drown it in a bathtub. Yes, that's a, that's exactly what I want, Joe. Yes, that's that's a hundred percent what I'm advocating for. No, uh, it's obviously not. But the 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 ridiculous of the claim that you're making is the point that I'm that I'm making. Yes, you want to transition to a different style. You want Medicare for all. Uh, find me ten Democrats that don't want. Medicare for all as as a correct. We didn't hear a word of that. Oh. Because I hear all of it right now. Yes, because you're the one who's speaking in your own head. Your connection cut out no. for at least the last 15 seconds. And it's gone again. Oh, odd that I just heard you when you didn't hear me. So we are we are having technical difficulties, Joe. Yes, you are. Uh, fine. Yes, a hundred percent. The myriad of interconnections between our two computers uh, are my responsibility at my end. Yes, um, but either way, it's been a highly productive conversation, Joe. Mm-hmm. You, you've oh, been a very, very receptive person when encountering points of view that you do not directly endorse. Well, thank you, Joe. Um, I would suggest eight ounces of water. And a good night's sleep. I would, I, I would suggest that you actually study systems of government and understand what anarchism and socialism actually are mm. before you actually, you know, endorse things that you don't actually understand when you're speaking about them. Well, thanks for that advice. Uh, you're very... Joe, eight ounces of water and a good night's sleep. Oh. oh no, not not with not with <clears throat> tobacco throat voice caboose. No. Way too gravelly, way too rough on the throat to do that. Um This is like the anti work newscast. <laughs> Just oh you're still there, Joe. Okay, so yeah, eight ounces of eight ounces of water and some sleep, my man. Sleep on your side. Uh, oh, yeah, Kai, you should study up on anarchism. Read some solid. Ah, gotcha. I see. Caboose, I didn't see the, I didn't see the setup. I'm sorry, Caboose. <laughs> oh. 
It's okay. Daniel Woolman, you remind me of an or, of an orange apostrophe. Actually, I say that, but maybe it's more like a purple apostrophe. Maybe it's two purple apostrophes. Hmm. Actually, I think you remind me of an orange apostrophe followed by two purple apostrophes at low opacity, like 20%. Well, thank you, Daniel Woolman. Hey, Papa John. Ah, you just missed, you just missed a dude who's, he's a bit drunk. He means well. He's just having trouble modulating. There could probably be a productive conversation there if he were sober. But, I mean, you know, he was three sheets to the wind. You don't understand, I guess, and bro. That, that was great. That needs to go up on YouTube. This caboose. Oh yeah, it'll be, it'll be a thing. It'll be a thing. I should actually. Oh, I don't know, let's call it two hours. Joe. Um. Yeah, dude. That welcome page is um. That welcome page puts in work. That's all I have to say. That welcome page puts in work. <laughs> no idea. What steaks in my freezer? Puff Cheetos in my pantry and beer in my fridge. Let's do this. No, no, Caleb. He didn't get past it. I had to. Uh, I had to. Uh, I had to walk him in. No, I. We had to. We had to give him the role. Um, and then he, uh, he had to be walked through with specific instructions and screenshots and yeah, no, no, yeah, no, he never made it past the welcome page. I mean, it was, you know, we let him, we let him pass. <laughs> it was hammered. Um, uh, so. Oh. Oh, okay, I see what just happened. Fucking now go to bed. Yeah, go to bed, Joe. You're timed out. Go to bed. Oh, um. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Dr. Professor SC went over and fucking commented a comment on that com that 2.5 conversation video saying seems like he's actually pretty reasonable. Sounds like a lefty to me. Homie. I know that's your YouTube account. He fucking, he thought that like, I wouldn't know who that was. That's his fucking YouTube account. He tried to fucking. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh my God. Yeah, dude, dude. He tried to play it off like it was someone else too. Seems like he's actually pretty reasonable. Sounds like a lefty to me. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm pinning this. Yeah, oh yeah.
nah whether if i can get away with it not. i'm i'm dude i hearted that comment i pinned that comment and then i replied sup doc uh, doc bro dude your youtube account was attached to your discord account i know this is you man come on oh <laughs> man this dude's sad like it's kind of depressing Oh, Jesus, man. Just let it go. You got outed. Um, I'm pretty sure. What's up, commodity? COVID aid fraud that's supposedly been going on recently. Dude, yeah, a whole bunch of fucking states used their COVID aid for uh, uh, arming police and shit like that. Yeah, there's a, I saw the list going around. I didn't pop it, but yeah, that's, that's it's coming out. There's a whole bunch of fucking states that misappropriated COVID funds and funneled it to their militaries. <laughs> Caleb, I'm not allowed to reply to comments on YouTube anymore. Then no one's shock. Oh, <laughs> uh, that poor bastard. Homie. Uh, drags vape. Nice, Papa. Oh, uh, who we got? Dang, how do you know? Uh, how do I know you don't know? Fair enough. Oh, Wither. Oh, God, I hear birds chirping outside. You're fucked, man. You're fucked. Uh. <laughs> That's just that. That makes my night. That makes my night. Um, I should, I should upload just me reacting to that as conversations, doctor, doctor, professor, SC 2.5.5 <laughs> fucking eh. just keep a, keep a running tally. Cause it seems like this might be a recurring segment. <laughs> It'd be great. Um, uh, The YouTube avatar is also the same as his Twitch one, so not sure what he was thinking. Oh, dear God. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 Jay. That's, that's the fucking <laughs> pure science. Nah, I'm good, Papa. I'm good. Nah, I'm not that guy. I do. I'll talk about it. It's fucking funny. But, you know, I'm not going to fucking throw it up there. Um, ah. Caboose, good luck. God bless. <laughs> uh, yep. And. Oh, um, to upload Joe and Doc Prof Fraud, uh, Dr. Professor Fraud, uh, as episode three. It's actually, there's other ones, um, but yeah, yeah, that's, I, I'm thinking. Jesus Christ, Joe, Joe, we're not talking about you, man. Joe, you just go to bed, Joe, go to bed. You're timed out because you're fucking drunk, man, and you need to sleep. We're not talking about you. We moved on to some other dude. It's okay, man. Go to bed. Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Dr. Professor is making me sad. I just, I mean... Okay, so that begs the question, right? He's either committed to the bit or he's a really bad fucking psychologist. I'm not sure which is more depressing. <laughs> yeah. Right, Kaiser? He's either he's either a depressingly attached to this bit troll. He's a CIA maybe he's a CIA tra trainee, says Lord for two. Uh can you call Joe and Dr. Professor and make them talk to each other? They probably agree. <laughs> It'd be great. 
Um, a bad psychologist that fakes a smart person accent is actually amazing, says Wither. It would be an interesting character if it weren't a reality. <laughs> hey! What's up, man? <laughs> well, thanks for supporting Bezos. I'll take you. I'll take you to uh, 250. Fucking <laughs> you, you sure. You sure. You don't want to go the other way. You gave me content, man. Fucking that was, it was a great episode. I had fun with that. Dude, that was absurd. You trying to pass that off as fucking evidence. That was ridiculous, man. And even the HCP itself, like that's fucking you're like, here's to go to the root of the dude. The ACP has nothing to do with that. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. There's no data in that project to correlate that. You're just you're just adorable. I love it. And now you're commenting like fake comments on on your fucking <laughs> on the YouTube ch uh, fucking video, dude. Come on, man. Oh. Evidence of what? Evidence of the human connectome project existing and taking scan fMRI scans of health 35 healthy male and female individuals. Because that's what that was evidence of. Even if I allow you the abstraction to at all the way to the actual scans, which you didn't provide, you didn't fucking point to, you didn't say and then correlate. To, you didn't do shit, man. Fucking, but even if I extend that grace that, okay, include the scan data. None of the scan data is useful in that, in that context. There's no, no context to that whatsoever. Fucking about, uh, uh, to be able to correlate to, where was the study data correlating any of those subjects to early life comprehensive sexual education? None of that is contained within the Human Connectome Project. Not any of it. That's not the focus. That's not an aspect. That's not a thing they even look at. That's not what they're about at all. And I have access to all of their data anyway. So I pulled it up on fucking stream. Like, dude, homie. Fucking project manager got right back to me after hearing this nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> that five to seven business days came down to like three and a half, 358 or some shit like that when I sent that email off. Like, I told him straight what's up. I am a streamer. This is what has occurred. Can I get access to this data set? Yeah. Like, homie, that is not evidence of anything even remotely related to your, your thesis. Just not at all. That was your adamant evidence. That was the only thing you could produce. Meanwhile, the rest of that video, I'm just dunking study and study on study on study on study. You sent me bullshit fabricated wannabe evidence that you didn't think I would have the capacity to get access to and have the absolute just spiteful nature to look into this bullshit story you're selling. Homie, you tried to sell a fucking absolute fake bill of goods. As evidence in that debate, conversation, argument, whatever you want to call it. You tried to pass off some nonsense and I fucking called your bluff and a whole bunch of people saw it. Like your arguments aren't going to work here. Like literally from a rhetorician standpoint, you have no ethos. And you have no logos. 
because your fucking data was bunk. So, like, dude, take your L, move on. Nobody's interested. You're just committed to a bit at this point that ain't nobody buying. So, good luck. Um, how bad does someone have to be to get banned here? Anita said it must be pretty high bar considering Joe's still here. Oh yeah, dude, Anita, it's basically TOS. You have to violate TOS usually or get super fucking annoying or boring. Um, there's, there's lines that you can cross, but the fact of the matter is, is they're, they're more irritation based than they are some level of offense. So TOS straight up because we have to protect the channel. <clears throat> and then besides that. It really is just a matter of boring trolls have a tendency to get nixed. Um, and then just the ones that won't shut the fuck up and just spam in chat and shit like that, they tend to get nixed as well. But yeah, it is a pretty high bar. You're not you're not usually gonna get banned for some like shit opinion. Like, you know, you can have your shit opinion. We'll abuse it, but you can have your shit opinion. So that's usually the bar. <laughs> uh, is it ethos isn't that a bougie water <laughs> oh god we have to go back what was the what did we decide the 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 fucking word was i need to go back our fucking water venture um amygdalas Yeah, it was like Mouveau or something like that. Reiki, well, Reiki water was, yeah, like that was, that was before we did something else. There's, there's the M word. But the fact that we can't remember the M word means Reiki is a better brand. It's Reiki water. Dude, it's a better brand. We remember the Reiki water, but we don't remember, like it's an MV something. Yeah. Reiki works. Mwa Ashabariki wa or something like that, says Martin Osis. Yeah, dude, it's Riki water. That's the brand that'll fucking stick in people's brains, apparently. Fucking evil. Uh, let's see. <laughs> if you allow me in the future, I will I will try to improve my method. <laughs> Are you asking me to help you be a better con man? Is that what that's about? Because, like, that's what you... If you're looking to better yourself, my man, that's what you're trying to do. You're not... Bruh. Are you still... Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> you declensions for days. Yes, Che. We went through that list. That was just insane. He'll probably try to find something more obscure and harder to double check. All you need to do is get a list of the, like, no scanned, uh, like, um, one-off, like, singular copy books that, like, university libraries have and shit. Like, there's books that you just, like, you have to go there to, to read the damn thing. Um, and so you can get those sorts of lists of books, and you could use one of those. And it's based, it's functionally impossible to access. Um, so you could go that route. You could actually, you can gate some shit. Bois, Ilio Barikiwa, I think. Aspen's got the copy and paste. Oh, no, no, no. Viva, the water's going to be, the water. <laughs> Viva. Dude, this is the, dude, Viva. Dude, this is some like straight up like German Nazi villain shit. All right. So trying to outcompete Nestle right on the evil 
So what we came up with is we'll use blimps to gather the rain clouds above Africa to steal their rainwater before it even falls. And we're going to call it Blessed Rain, which is Mwa Ilio Barikiwa, which we're going to call, we're going to brand as Riki Water. And we're going to sell it in glass bottles that we ship over on airplanes <laughs> to drive up the, the ecological cost as well. Right. Like this is this is us trying to out evil Nestle, basically. <laughs> like, how bad can we make this? Oh. Uh, che, <laughs> good to know. Che, good to know. Thank you. Um. <laughs> Avoid the water made by Kvass Residue Gugan, which is completely free. Uh, Bill Burgo, uh, Bill Go Burr on Nestle. Dude, she, it is evil shit. Dude, Nestle is straight up evil. Dude, that's comic book villain evil. Fucking, I don't understand why people think that water is a human right. Why shouldn't we be able to absolutely commoditize all water on this planet? Yeah. Dude, that's some super villain shit. I'm going to fucking own all the water on the planet and sell it back to them. Are you kidding me? That's Saturday morning cartoons. Straight up, that's Captain Planet. That's Captain Planet. That's a Saturday morning cartoon villain. Fuck that guy. <laughs> like, like, Bill Burr's right. Dude, that's some crazy shit. You hear people saying shit like that. You're like, I'm sorry, what? We're letting this motherfucker walk around? That dude's a criminal. You know that, right? Like, that dude's like super villain criminal. Like, put his ass in fucking Gitmo or some shit, right? Like, homie, that's what that shit's for. Fucking, are you shitting me? We got some crazy fucker walking around saying that he's gonna fuck it. He's gonna fucking privatize just water. Are we just gonna let that shit slide? Cool. Cool. That air is coming. That air is coming. They got the land. They got the water. They want the air. Yeah. That shit's coming. Somehow, some way. You see it in that Dyson fucking mask, which I said, I'm like, does it work? That's my first fucking question. Does the mask work? But that pollution filter that Dyson's come up with, dude, that's, that's, them, that's them selling you clean air. That they're coming for the air now. Straight up. We're not just going to let it slide. We're going to make him president of the U.S. Oh, I could see us doing that. <clears throat> yep. Breathing is overrated. The blimp fight crew would need to be slave labor to compete with Nestle. Wither. 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 Where were you the other night? Dude, that takes it to another level. I got to tell you, Wither, I'm really proud of that, that night show, right? Because nobody even, none of us thought to include slavery. Not a single person that night, while we were trying to make that system of water theft and sale as evil as possible, none of us suggested slavery. Didn't even occur to any of us. Hmm. That's a really interesting point. Really proud of the crew that was there that night. Didn't even dawn on any of us. Yeah. We're like, okay, so you could steal it and you could ship it and hurt the environment. None of us even thought of fucking slavery. You're right, though, Wither. To compete with Nestle properly, we're going to need some slaves. And, you know... The number one contributor to the cost of the, the blimp system is going to be weight. That's going to be fuel cost. So lighter is better, smaller and lighter, if you know what I'm saying, right, for, for crews. 
Um, we'll pay them like, you know, double whatever the regional rate is, which is garbage. Anyway, they'll, you know, feel better than their peers and it will, you know, rise them above a little bit, but not enough to make a true life out of it. So, you know, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's a good point. We, we, we could, we could do that. That's definitely a way we could compete with Nestle. I bet there's like some small ducting that you're going to need like small hands to get into or something like that too, to maintain the equipment. Yeah. Double 10 Z is 20. Uh, double 10 Z is 20 cent. Seems fair, says Che. Uh, we're digging deep and cheap for late versus Wither. <laughs> See, Wither gets it. Wither gets it. Um, so we measure the BMI of all the slaves to ensure they're just a bit below normal at the very least. Yes. Yes, Sippy, exactly. See, that's, dude, this is, these is the sort of efficiencies. I swear to God, you know, somebody's done this. Somebody's considered shit like this. There's, there's been the equivalent of this and not just once, hundreds and thousands of times, these sorts of just calculated decisions that it's like, you know, it's cheaper if they're actually children, right? I'm sorry, what? No, no, no. We could just get like children from the subcontinent and just put them in the mines instead. It would be actually advantageous. Mm, well, let's get some children. That that shit actually happens. Like we're 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 riffing on it for the purposes of decompressing some of this evil in our life that we actually are surrounded by. But the truth of the matter is, is that yeah, dude, they really do make those kind of judgment calls all of the time. Uh, be careful, Nestle. We're coming for your penthouse in hell. Bezos is a beast. Aspen, Bezos definitely paid for that study. Oh, yeah. Uh, Zippy, and that's how we institute middle management slaves. We have one slave, weigh and measure all them slave kids. See? That's, dude, that's, you already, dude, ranking up, you just fucking cranking up that evil. Yeah. Reeky water is going to be, and now we can, dude, now we can really justify that fucking because we were going to go fancy bottle we were going to charge like 250 dollars for a bottle yeah that was that's where we ended where price point we were talking we 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 initially we were in the 10 to 20 we were like the 1999 range but then i think like this sort of thing stick to the high-end market 250 a pop bare minimum yeah and then some premium brand sp spin off that cost like a thousand yeah, you you gotta if you're gonna if you're gonna be evil about it, fucking you you're you're gonna be evil across the board. <laughs> you sell it back to the people you got it from at double the rate. Um, nah, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna transport it halfway across the globe. You know what though? Uh, Whether I may uh, we may sell um, resale rights to one select distributor in whatever region or you know in Africa. So there's an inbuilt monopoly there. So we'll export it back to North America. And then if the importer in Africa can f have like billionaires, fuck it, that's, well, you can re-import the water. Yeah, that, that's, that's, how, that's how I'd roll on that one. Yeah, very limited re-importation. Yeah, you get those Ghanaian multimillionaires and shit like that. Dude, this is just a fucked up shit that they do. This is, a f this is just us r riffing on truth. It's fucking bizarre as shit. Hey, I see your minis. Good job, uh, good job, Kaiser. Fucking five skelly men. Have the water blessed by Copeland. Oh, yes. But we need good teams, or PR teams. Oh, yeah. D d you know. Skeletons. Uh, it deals with the capitalists now and not the people in the slightest. Oh, yeah. Wither. You don't, you don't ever go to the people. You just immediately go to the, the oligarchs. So. Yeah. We should also have a small company that claims to do it ethically for the people that hate us, but it's always us under the curtain. Exactly, Amherst. Yes. 
Amherst da- tape fucking, I love the workshopping. I love the fucking hive mind. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the hive mind. I always have been. I always will be. See, with every, with every fucking firing of those neurons, we get a new way to make it even more evil. Yeah. We, we fucking, we need, um, we need a cover, a cover company, a rebrand or our, our organic line, you know. One of the people on the PR team is a black guy for diversity. Wither, can we get him to be gay too? We'd really, corporate, the board, would really prefer if we could just you know, keep the diversity down. So, like, can we, can we, is that possible? Like, can he just, do we know they're gay when we take pictures of them? Like, is that, does the camera convey gayness? Do we know that? <laughs> I could have fun with a character like that if I had to role play that sort of like dummy middle management fucking like, do we know any of this? You know? Yeah. Is there a gay filter we can use? (laughs) Yeah. Half black Asian, uh, half black Asian gay woman. So we only have to hire one minority person. Check. Okay. Mm -mm. Uh, Run Mayor Pete type uh, dance ads. (laughs) Dude, I, I've been cracking that same joke for for years now. Hey, I am I am proud to live in a time where a person can be openly gay <clears throat> and a closeted a closeted Republican. Yeah, I'm 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 proud to live in that time. And apparently, Ben Shapiro's bussy and followed me 15 minutes ago, and I am here for it. That would be hilarious. Oh, is he still here? That dude's still here. Gay on camera, just giving him an ascot. Che, dude, that's that's classic Hollywood, Che. Good on you. Yeah, that definitely would be that sort of manipulation. Oh, he's still going. Anyway. I uh, can't let the workers in the first world discuss their wages openly or else they'll find out how low the women and people of color are paid, says Wither. Uh, yes. And and the newbies. First line. That that's a common breaking point in um, union negotiations. The veterans turn on the uh, the the newbies. That happens a lot. That's a that's a breaking point in union negotiations. Commonly, the ones who have seniority, are like well, you need us most, right? Like, can you if we're do if we are gonna do this, us first. Yeah, they go straight Vanguard. So, yeah, that's that's also one of those things that you'll see. Um, but, yeah, no, of course they do. <laughs> uh, they do it to everybody, basically. I, I mean, it, you know, get the inbuilt biases enhance and increase numbers, but they do do it to everybody. Everybody's getting screwed by that shit. They want everybody's wages as low as they can get them. Not just women, not just black people. <laughs> they want everybody to be paid the least they need to pay them to make sure that this slave wheel keeps moving. Um, that's, I mean, that's how that works. Yeah, they're, they're, they got the whip on everybody. Some a little less. Who's lower on the totem, women or newbies? Oh, well, I mean, female newbie. Dude, a female newbie has it the worst. The worst. Yeah. Because the dudes are going to want to fuck her. That's, that's going to be, dude, that's going to be an element. Right? I mean, you could make, you could make the argument that like a gender non-conforming individual or a flamboyant, flamboyantly gay dude, you know, would, uh, would be marginalized in very similar fashion. But the woman has the, like the, the traditional female presenting standard stereotypical passing heteronormative cis, cis appearing woman will be... She, They'll have that beautiful extra layer of the dudes now want to bone you too. So they hate you. They resent you. They look down upon you. They marginalize all of knowledge or experience you may bring. They are paternalistic. They're condescending across the board. But on top of all that, you make their pee-pee hard. So that'll be fun. (laughs) 
It's easier to divide if you take from the weakest group and convince the better off at the work. The others are crazy and their issues don't exist. Boom, no unions. Yep. Oh, it's fucking... They play dirty. I would... Oh, God. Okay, so that's just that side conversation I have not been participating in. I'm pretty sure Red and Martinosis have been actually having like the, the like sex ed conversation. Dr. Professor SC is, of course, living in his own little world, I suppose. He's going back and forth with a couple of people. I'm sure somebody will sum it up for me. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's just been a, a civil back and forth with her. I think Martinosis and Red are just having a conversation. I'm okay with that. It's the entire purpose. I don't want to be, need to be the only one having conversations. I'm I'm all for that. Um, uh, you know. The username, man. The username. The username. Think about it. He's got a... Being super generous. Super generous. He claims to have a master's degree in psychology. His username is Dr. Professor. What does that say about somebody's psychology? That's, dude, that's some shit. <laughs> that's, 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 that's some shit. Come on. Marcus, wait, when you say civil, you mean it's not supposed to be like a civil war? Shit. Um, Martin knows this, ask me tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm too far, too far into the weed at this point. I mean the perfectly legal tobacco substitute that I use in place of weed. Um, to start getting into the, the specifics, but we can do that, man. We've done it before. I'll happily do it again. All right. There's programs that people have already created to do these sorts of things, and it's not vigilantism. It's, it's, it's far from it. But, yeah. I'm not, I'm not breaking any new ground. That's the truth. But, yeah, we can have that conversation. Uh, what, what, I have to, I gotta know. What the fuck, um, uh, I respect it. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, I have to ask, though. What's going... Okay, so what? one of y'all motherfuckers that have been keeping track of this shit, give me, give me a summary. So what, what's, what's, what's Doc Prof trying to uh, pass off now? What's, what's, what's the pivot and the... What, what, give, give, me, give me the rundown. I'm curious. Somebody drop it in. <laughs> Take your time. But, yeah, I want to know. Oh, yeah, Caboose. He's still here. They've been going back and forth in chat. That's his proof? Hit. Could you share? I mean, are you shitting me? Like, wait. Man, you're not good at this. Ah, it's okay, Cupcake. Could you share the brilliant story of Russell's celestial teapot? Well, um, it's common to, for people to say things like, uh, you can't disprove God, and, and as though that were a, a positive reason for believing in God. And Russell uh, anticipated the flying spaghetti monster by about 40 years um, <laughs> by, um, by saying that if I, if I were to propose that there exists a, a, a China teapot um, in orbit around the sun uh, between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter, and specify that it's much too small to be seen by even our largest <coughs> telescopes. It is impossible 
to disprove this, but that is no reason to believe that there is, in fact, a teapot. Uh, and, and for teapot, of course, you could substitute <coughs> absolutely anything. There's, there are a billion, a trillion things that you could imagine postulating, <coughs> which you cannot disprove. You're even a disappointing troll. I mean, I'll show it to you. Don't worry. I mean, are you shitting me? Wait, wait. Could you shit? <laughs> that was an honest reaction. Yep. What the <laughs> what the actual fuck react face? Cool. Like, that just sucks on so many levels. It sucks as a troll. It sucks as a fucking claim to credibility. It sucks as... It just sucks, man. <laughs> you're, like, the least... You're the most disappointed... I'm so disappointed in you. I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> that's that's all I have for you at this point. It's fucking ridiculous, man. Did you shit... Is there one being he <coughs> held? Um, no, no, that one. Channel content. Comments. Um, all right. Held for review. Oh, shit. Yeah, 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 No, those are fucking good comments. Delete this shit, though. All right. Cool. Uh, hey, Replay. Ah, uh, fucking... Dude, Replay. He actually was cut... Fucking, dude, he was fun for the first one. Uh, Replay, go watch Conversations uh, 2 and 2.5. With Dr. Professor SC on the YouTube channel. It's fun. It's fun for a minute. Now it's just kind of sad. Oh, FYI, <clears throat> US citizens. Apropos of nothing, I advocate for nothing. I merely report this headline as important news updates. <clears throat> the Fourth Circuit Court has ruled that a person has a right to come to the door with a firearm. This is an important decision related to qualified immunity and reasonable force. The Fourth Circuit Court has ruled that just because you see a person with a gun in their house doesn't mean shit. We'll see if that case continues its way up to the Supreme Court. Replay, America, y'all wild as fuck. We are. Dude, it's fucking wacky as shit here, man. The shit we have to consider. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking wacky, man. Fuck it, boy. Yeah, uh, again, I advocate for nothing. I'm merely pointing out that that is a, a potential change in the landscape of our country. <laughs> Where I don't, uh, you know. I see them escalating. I'm see, I see them escalating. They'll treat every single call like SWAT now. That was their argument for using SWAT for felony warrant deliveries. 
so like in Vegas, if it's a felony warrant service, SWAT automatically does it. So, yeah, I could I could easily see a world in where they just ramp up to the next level and they consider every single police interaction to be like a SWAT level interaction. Yeah, I could see them doing that. They just up the militarization. Uh, yeah, it'd be real fun, Cupcake. Oh, God, is he still trying to convince us of something? I, I, I just, why, man? Uh, oh, that's a big fucking photo, isn't it? All right. Um, Red, what was, I mean, what's his pivot now? What's his pivot now? Um... <laughs> it looks like home invasion's back on the menu, boys. Oh Jesus, it really kind of is. It really kind of is potentially, dude. They're they're out of fucking pocket with some of this shit. Um. So what will happen if somebody actually does the same and actually uses their right and shoots the intervention squad because they did come in unannounced? We've had cases where that's actually been upheld. There was a dude who used, I think, an AR-15, and, like, he winged a couple or something. Like, he defended himself. And the court ruled that it was justified. So, it's happened before. It's not the de facto, and that dude was a white dude, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> it is most assuredly not a uh, privilege extended to people of color that often. Let's just put it that way. But it does happen. It's not one extended to even white Americans that often, but when it is extended, it tends to be white Americans. Let's just put it that way. Um, but yeah, no, that's happened before where somebody shot the cops and in self-defense and courts have upheld it. So, <clears throat> yeah, could get interesting. <laughs> I shot the sheriff, but I only wing the deputy. Uh, the privilege cast will get first dibs whether they ask for it or not. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's how it works. Whether that's how it works. It's fucked. We continue to ch attempt to dismantle it. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. But you know. Take a knee and take a breather from time to time so you don't lose your fucking mind. That's my only advice. Um, Viva, I, there's some shit in chat I don't, I haven't been keeping up with, but apparently, like, there's two, there's two side conversations in chat. Um, one of them is seemingly good faith and of value, and the other one is Dr. Professor SC. <laughs> so, um, Oh, he's in your DMs, Red? Oh, I'm sorry. Good luck with that. Yeah, my DMs are closed. He lost the ability to DM me 24 hours after I sent him that message, inviting him back, which I did, by the way. Professor SC, I showed the screenshot. I invited you back. You chose not to be here for it. Or not to even send a message. So, that's on you. <laughs> uh, I mean, so now he's... <laughs> Now, now he's not an expert in, in childhood development and psychology. Now he's an expert in IT, and he knows nothing about IT, it seems like. Cool. Cool. Uh, apparently, he's also rambling with, uh, with Red in their DMs about how uh, social and political repercussions for calling transgender ID uh, identities mental health disorders or something. Yeah. <laughs> it tracks. It definitely tracks his beast. Aspen said, well, at least he's consistent. Um, <laughs> God damn, man, 
I don't know. Hang out. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I gotta say. It could be fun. You can keep around for a minute. We'll see what happens. Mm, pretty sure we lost Glazy, so. Adopt a new one. <laughs> We're in the market for a, for a pet to adopt. Uh, dude, Zippy, it's not. Dude. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Glazy will be back. He'll get bored eventually, says Goofy. Glazy hangs out elsewhere. Yeah, no. I, he, he left the server. He left the server. He said, no, I liked it. Well, you people fucking. You piled on too much. You piled on too much. He couldn't take it all. That's just the he's he's he is but one man after all. There was a limit. He does it to himself though. <laughs> caboose. Oh caboose. Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Uh, so, is what it is, is what it is. Man. Yeah, hold on. Um, fucking yeah, dude. I Joe. I don't need to hang on. Joe's getting back into shit. Joe's getting back into shit. Um, you know what? There. Give me a sec. There we go. Get him that invite. Uh, let's just copy that. Cancel that. Damn. Ah. Uh, nice. Okay. All right. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, uh, Kabusi emails me. Uh, he, he, he emails me, so. Um, yeah. We just go back and forth that way. Oh, yeah, different Joe. Sorry, Heart Joe. Heart Joe. German Joe. Our Joe. Not that Joe. The good Joe, yes. The Joe we like and love. Um... He's coming back, Kaiser. He's coming back. He's just been doing things. Um, all right. So let me do this. He's 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 sorting some stuff out. That's all. He's doing some adjustments. This German anti-Nazi rants were funny as fuck. Joe's Joe's a great guy. Joe's a great guy. He, he's you know has struggles like all of us. So he's just been doing some stuff. Oh, oh God. 
Um, so now it's now it's like we're in. Jesus Christ, we are actually. <laughs> uh, Wither, um, um, you're talking about Curio. Curio retired from streaming. He's still around. He still does creative stuff, but he's he retired from streaming. You're talking about Curio. Um. You ever had ranch water? It's Topo Chico mineral water, lime, and tequila. I mean, no, but interesting. I'm not a big tequila fan, Kaiser. I've had a few different types, and I'm not a big tequila fan. Yeah. Um, the birds have stopped chirping. I hate birds. Uh, he got a lizard. I follow him on Instagram, says so Zippy. Yeah. Tequila is pretty awesome, but it hates me. Yeah, I've never been a fan. Dude, that and Spice Drum. Spice Drum. Dude, just fucking keep walking with that Spice Drum. Just keep on moving. I'm not interested. That shit is disgusting. Um... Well, Zippy, think about my life. Usually when I'm going to bed is when those loud motherfuckers are kicking off. So. <laughs> Spice Drum is amazing. Are you crazy? Yeah, fuck, fuck Spice Drum. Sorry. <clears throat> Regular rum, though, says Zippy. Regular rum's fine. Rum, rum can have a seat at the table as far as we're talking mixers and cocktails and that sort of thing. Rum, rum can have a seat at the table. Spice Drum can get the fuck out. Shit's disgusting. How many people like fruity drinks? Dude, Wither, everybody likes fruity drinks. It's just a lot of people won't admit they like fruity drinks. Dude, fruity drinks are great. Are you shitting me? Dude, we don't drink alcohol because we like the fucking taste. We drink alcohol because we have to. Gets us through the fucking day, right? It's that sort of thing. It's a coping strategy as a species. We're, we're doping ourselves, right? Like, that's, that's why we're, you know, we're really doing it. Fruity drinks are great. They let you do that. And not sit there and go, oh, go, what the fuck? <sighs> right? You just down a bunch of them. You're like, oh, what the fuck is this? This is a, this is delicious. Fucking, yeah. Three of them and you're fucking blackout drunk. A daiquiri? Fuck yeah, Zippy. A fucking margarita, a daiquiri. Fucking, dude, sangria is the bomb. Are you shitting me? Sangrias are the best. And mimosas always have a seat at the table. Vodka and fucking orange juice? Are you shitting me? Dude, that's just a winner. It's a winner. Don't hate it because it's so popular. Don't hate it because it's simple. That's a fucking winner. Good, fresh, squeezed orange juice and a, a quality vodka to start your morning, basically? Yeah. That's that's your living life at that point. <clears throat> pina coladas, yes, pina coladas are amazing. Fuzzy navels are wonderful and dangerous as beast. Um, I, dude, a buttery nipple. Fucking, I forget what goes in this shit. Um, but it's delicious. Um. It's two parts butterscotch schnapps, one part Irish cream with uh, whipped cream and raspberry garnish. Straight up. It's just, it's schnapps and Irish cream and some whipped cream and fucking ras a raspberry garnish or something like that. Right? It's fucking delicious. It's fucking delicious. You're like, I could kill myself drinking these. Right? This is way too much alcohol and you just, yeah. My dad makes a mean Mai Tai, says Caboose. Nice. It's a lot of for the curious tradition where I'm from. Uh, time to duck a screwdriver. Yeah, fucking screwdrivers. Fucking solid work. Um, Wither tastes better when I mix it with lemonade. Most things do. Uh, it was his Mai Tais that I got super drunk on last week, says Caboose. Of course. It beast. Oh, my heaven. Yes, but no, but yes. Yeah. Manhattan, dude, that's just good cocktails. People who who are like, oh, that's men don't drink that shit. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, right? That's that's your that's on you, that's on you. If you can't admit that that shit is delicious and amazing, and if you're looking to get hammered, is a brilliant way to do it. Go fuck yourself. 
there's value. I'm, I'm a, a, a scotch drinker for fuck's sake, right? Like there's value there, but come on. Sangria is fucking delicious, man. It's very Moorish. <sighs> Red Christ. Now he's bringing up the suicide rates meme. What the fuck, man? Dude, Dr. Professor SC, you are so far off the rails. God bless you, Red. Um, a whiskey sour is a manly cocktail and pretty tasty. Uh, dude, Caboose, I used to drink Gimlets. Um, I used to drink Gimlets. So, in that, like, manly drink. But it's good. The fucking lime or the lemon will kick off of that gin. Or you can have a vodka Gimlet. Pretty effectively. Yeah. I dude. What's up, Echo? How'd your guys' stream go? Did you have a good one? We, uh, we've had some weirdos. I had a dude that was properly drunk. He's still around in people's DMs. Uh, I had an aggro dude I completely talked down. Hates my guts. But I talked him down just by being super fucking stoned and personable. I mean, under the influence of perfectly legal tobacco for the purposes of Twitch TOS. Um, he slurred his hiccups. Yeah, dude, um... Yeah, I completely just like humanized that dude and talked him off the ledge. <laughs> he he has a is a proudly cringe fucking troll account he even uses. I'm like Ah, uh, Hephaestus fan. Thanks for the follow. Um I like to look at train wrecks. Where is Doctor residing it now? Somewhere in Discord. No no Astro, he's up in uh, Red's he's in distant Red's fucking DMs. Yeah, he's he's DM in Red. It's, it's just weird as fuck. This dude just won't let it go. Y'all need to come to my house for a Korean barbecue and cocktail party. I might be willing to risk the godforsaken neuropathy I'm probably going to end up with eating some of that food and drinking some of that drink, but I would still suffer, Kaiser. I'd be down. <clears throat> good, good, good sleep. Good, good night, Zippy. Sleep well. Uh, Donchi, thanks for the follow. Yeah, he, um, he apparently is just harassing people behind the scenes. Sorry for you guys coming from Echo that don't know what the fuck we're talking about, but, yeah, we got this guy that, sort of the stuff of legend at this point, he's, he's, <laughs> claimed multiple areas of expertise that were readily debunked and has been shown to be quite the fraud, um, and he, um, refuses to just take the L and walk away. So it's getting kind of weird behind the scenes from certain people's DMs because he won't go away. <laughs> it's not on the Discord server. He's, he's not in Twitch chat as near as I can tell. But he is harassing random people in chat. So uh, we could milk the dweeb for months of content. Nah. I think we could get a 0.5, a, a, a 2.5.5 5 update out of this at most, at most. Like here's, here's a patch note. Um, he still continues. He, uh, he's pretending to be other people on YouTube now, which is just hilarious. Um, fucking. <laughs> Can't believe that guy. Ah, oh, we could milk the dweeb for months. Yeah, oh, I already read that. But either way, dude, it's yeah, it's coming up on three and a half hours. I need to make food. It's Kai food feeding time, and I don't have anything really prepared. <laughs> I don't have anything thawed or pre-made in like the rice department, or I'm gonna have to work for this meal. Um, well, bon appetit. Says, uh, says for twos. Um, it'll be a cocktail party, then cocktail party. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to raid over to public. Sorry to like bail on the Echo people, but you know I've been going for a while. And it's the night show. And I'm, I've been smoking tobacco. And I'm hungry. Shalom. Um, yeah, so... Jesus Christ, this timer. I'll have my maid outfit ready. I swear to God, Kaiser. 
Make me at, fucking sh make me start giving you orders and shit in your maid outfit. Fucking. Oh, uh, fuck it, a. Go fetch the barbecue. Uh, dude, I think they increased the timer on the raid outs. I really do. It seems a lot longer. I think they like doubled it. <laughs> oh, you and your fucking ginger boyfriend. I'm glad that that, that distant red and Martin Nose's conversation went the way it went. That's good. See you later.